Okay. Hi, Manuela. Hi, Sophie. Hi. How did you become an artist? Uh, I think I uh, always was interested in painting, already from childhood, going to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. There's pictures of me always standing in front of the, uh, what is it called, where you have your, put your paintings, easel. You know, so I always enjoy doing something. I was always uh, in my room at my desk, you know, doing things and drawings. And so I think it was always there. Just, I just didn't think about it as becoming an artist. Um, uh, so uh, I educated myself in, in doing other things. But being an artist was something like, you know, I were born to that, I thought. So, yeah. Okay. What do you enjoy most about being an artist? Um, I enjoy the way that I can uh, have my uh, studio and all the colors. And it's like going into a candy store. <laughs> and I really paint with a lot of colors. I really use uh, very bright and uh, uh, well, the whole color scheme, I would say. Uh, so. I love that part, being in the studio, I live and work in Sweden and it's very dark in the winter time, so for me when I go to my studio I put up the light and have all the colours and stuff. I don't want to go back out in the dark, yeah. I just want to stay inside and paint, so I, I enjoy a lot being amongst the colour and it makes me happy to do that. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, what do you think your artwork says about you? Um, I think that my artwork is really close to me in a way, in a mm -hmm. sense that, I mean, I would say all artists does some kind of mirroring in what they are doing. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I wouldn't be the first artist on earth, you know, reflecting a little bit of, on myself, or a lot. And I would say that many things in my paintings are really um, uh, definitely uh, things that I've been doing or thinking or I've experienced it or something. And it's there, it's there in a way. But maybe very subtle, maybe you wouldn't really realize it. And I also think that I was in search of something like femininity. Uh, because being a, uh, a child, I was always, not always, but sometimes treated like a little boyish style because I, was, I liked to run around and, you know, do things and I really had this short hair and so people, you know, really thought I was maybe like a boyish kind of girl. Mm -hmm. And I think that in my work I'm trying to to reach something of a femininity and I found that in the Asian style that I'm working with because I think that the Japanese women, they are, for me, they are the picture of the ultra femininity in a mm -hmm. way. So, I mean, a little bit, that's what I'm chasing after to, to, mm -hmm. nice. to collect in the paintings. Okay. What's the inspiration behind your artwork? Well, it's mainly Japan and mm -hmm. Asia, of course, but uh, uh, mainly Japan because of the aesthetics. And as I said before about the women, uh, because uh, actually I did art school in France, and I thought the French girls, you know, coming from Sweden, I thought the French girls were so with their high heels and go. I thought they were so feminine. But when I went afterwards to Japan, I felt like, wow, this is another level, even more. So, so, um, so that's that's a little bit. Yeah. Where do you go for inspiration? Japan, of course. <laughs> yes, I, I, I love to go there. And I think that you know, every time I go there, I, like, I collect something that I afterwards will uh, use in my studio. So when I go there, normally I don't work at the same time. I'll go around, I meet people, I have a lot of Japanese friends, we go to a lot of exhibitions, and we, I film and I, I take pictures, you know, and I gather things. And, but, but I don't do the, the, the work when I'm there. And then when I come home, there's always all this, like, I feel, always feel like a volcano when I come back to the studio, because there's all the things that is, is want to come out. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I start to interpret and, and, you know, like I said, the things that I've collected uh, can be some small things, just that suddenly maybe I was aware of that every time, every day suddenly it popped out, maybe and I thought, oh, I haven't se maybe I haven't seen it before just, or it was always there, or maybe it was my mind just, you know, who, 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 who was aware of it at that moment. But then I, I'll bring that home and eventually can see that coming out in my, in my paintings and it's, mm -hmm. it's continuous coming out in my paintings and so on. So, I mean, for one of the things that I collected once was like, uh, 
like in the streets, the, um, um, the lid for, uh, uh, for water and all, all that in the street, they were decorated with a kind of a very graphic sakura flower. Sakura is the cherry blossom flower. When I saw that the first time, I thought, oh my god, it's amazing. It's like a piece of art in the, in the streets, you know, like the lid for that in, in iron. And so and that flower is really uh, graphic, very simple and very graphic. But then you realize it's there. It's there in the prints, it's there in the, in, in the kimonos, in the, in the porcelain. So, so, uh, and that way of, of drawing that flower, I'd never seen it before. So I was really like amazed on that one. And then I, I eventually saw it everywhere. And so now it's, it's often in my paintings. Yeah. Cool. Are there any places in London you go for inspiration? Uh, and uh, places in London for inspiration. Um, I mean, uh, London for me is inspirational in a, in a sense that it's very energetic. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of things happening, and I like that kind of movement. So, because when you're in the studio, it's very lonely, and I work by myself, and so I like the energy, and, and I can feel that a lot in London, you know, in Tokyo also, of course, but in London it's not... I don't think I, I gather inspiration in the way that I do in, in Japan, but it's more the feeling and the energy that I, I, I consider is giving me a, a push. Okay. If you had an unlimited budget, what would you make? Oh, I know already. I, have, I want to make a sculpture, mm -hmm. and I want to make it in Japan, and I already know where I want to make it, with whom I want to make it, and the fabric, I've been visiting them three times now and I had estimates on how I want to do it. It's mm -hmm. like a sculpture with a fountain in it. So I want the sculpture, you know, to be a fountain. And it's a girl. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, so I really know exactly what I want to do. If I had that budget, I would go directly in there and do that. Okay. Mm. What do you want to leave as a legacy? Um, hopefully, uh, my paintings uh, will survive me, of course. and. I gather that uh, what they are doing already when I'm alive, and at least that's what uh, people tell me who has been collecting them or when I meet clients and so on, they tell me that uh, they have uh, such a nice energy and positive feeling from the paintings. Mm -hmm. and when they have guests home, you know, they, they oh, they can talk about the piece and say, oh, how lovely! It gives you such a positive and nice energy. And if I can leave that behind once I'm not here anymore and have that kind of energy vibrating after me like a tail, <laughs> then I'll be very happy to okay. to have left that. Mm. Cool. So, what's the best thing about working with Debbie? Oh, I think. Uh, the very best thing is that uh, you and Sophia and Samir are always, I have the feeling you're always there in a way. Mm -hmm. and you're always positive and you're always open and it's like, I know that you all are very busy and in one way you feel like you always have time when you ask something or if you need, need you in a way. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that a lot. And I also appreciate uh, the talks we have had here for the works that I've, I've been doing. I have also have the feeling Samir is really uh, different than other galleries that I've been working with. And I, I, I really was smiling the other day when he said that, you know, they would be out of work if, they, if it weren't for you. Uh, I think that's a very interesting point of view because if there weren't any artists, there wouldn't be any gallerists. And um, it's like they tend to forget that. Yeah. You always have to feel like you're in some kind of position or some kind of gratitude. You mm -hmm. should be really happy to expose in my gallery. Exactly. And in one way, you know, it's a collaboration. And I feel that this place is, is a collaborative workshop. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all getting new ideas, we can all uh, develop. And, and that, that I feel from you, the team here, you're all interested in you know, going further and, and you know, develop and do things. It's not, everything is not settled. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been working with that before. People, you know, we do like this. It's always got, have, have been like that, always be like that. So, no. so I, I appreciate that kind of, of uh, uh, freshness and uh, excitement you know, of doing something and also creative in a way because I, I really uh, think that the team is creative. Good. What's next for you? Uh, well, what's next for me, hopefully, I would love to have a solo show in London. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
That's, I would look forward to that. Yeah. What about in Sweden? Uh, what in uh, Sweden? Uh, in Sweden now, I'm, I'm not really sure about the schedule because I've been working very hard on getting here. I just had an exhibition in Krakow uh, mm -hmm. that I finished. Um, so I haven't really you know, made new plans. There's a gallery in Sweden that maybe wants, we want to do something in springtime, but I haven't really decided whether I want to do it or not yet. So uh, f for the moment, there's no grand plans, but uh, I'm working on it. Okay. Mm. When's your next trip to Japan? Uh, that's a very good question too, because I've been putting my energy on, on doing, making this happen, making mm. this work. So I, I feel a little bit I should focus on going to London uh, for work and networking and do things like that. But um, and I didn't go to Japan this year because of the accident early this March. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know. Um, Hopefully I could go in springtime again, because I love springtime when the cherry blossoms are blooming. So hopefully I could go in springtime. Before that I don't think it would be possible. So.